If you want to experience high-tech cities, tranquil temples, beautiful landscapes and friendly traditional locals, keep watching as we explore Japan. Japan. Hello and welcome to episode 102 of Planet Cruise Weekly. I'm Keith, my name hasn't changed, but my guest has. Welcoming back, Mr. Glenn Wallace, the back. king of cruise. I've been away for ages. Yeah, haven't you? Yeah. Sunning yourself. No, I, was, I wasn't very well a couple of weeks ago. I didn't have a voice, as you rightly know on the 100th show, so I couldn't do that. And uh, yeah, I've been out and about doing stuff, so uh, nice to be back. Well, it's great to have you back. And just in time, because today we're talking about a fascinating part of the world that I know you love, Glenn. Japan. Been there. It's a phenomenal place. It is phenomenal, isn't it? It really, yeah. really is. Uh, now, it feels more like a different planet, in a way, than a small archipelago of volcanic islands. And even though Japan is at the forefront of worldwide technological advancements, it's still revered uh, for its long and ancient history. Its high-tech skyscrapers contrast with naturally stunning landscapes and high-end fashion juxtaposes with the traditional kimono. Now, a little known fact about Japan is it is actually a stunning archipelago made up of 6,000 islands. With a range of mountainous national parks, subtropical islands and a rich history, there is something here for everyone to explore. Now, exploring the unknown has in recent years become a cruising requirement with further flung destinations providing bigger and more exciting experiences for those in search of something new. Speaking of something new, in our poll we want to know what interests you most about Japan. Mm. Is it the new technological advances of the country or is old traditions of the country as well? So, you know, get involved in the poll. Get involved, get in, involved the poll. in the poll. It's just up there right now. So, let's have a look at a few of the ports of call that you'll experience if you get to cruise around the archipelago of Japan. First of all, the metropolis of Tokyo, with its many sides and many facets. And while you're experiencing this amazing place, you want to make the most of what every aspect has to offer. It's an incredible urban sprawl where the ultra-modern can often be found sitting right next to highly traditional buildings. It's a city of many, many surprises. Now, part of this fabulous skyline is Tokyo's Skytree, which is basically a huge tower with an observation deck of the city. It's the tallest structure in Japan and will give you some fabulous views of the city itself. Now, due to Tokyo's size, to save time and to avoid rushing your visit, you may be better off picking one of the neighbourhoods and exploring that thoroughly. Now, for example, entertainment districts can be found in Shubai, Shinjuku and Roppongi, where you can enjoy high-class shopping by day and a plethora of karaoke bars by the evening. Now, while in Tokyo, it's well worth taking a look at the Meiji Shrine in Shibuya, Unu Park and Senshoi Temple in Akusa. But you could just as easily spend days wandering about the labyrinth of alleyways and popping in and out of restaurants and sampling these intricately prepared creations. There's something about Japan and being precise and being detailed that's really, really, really beautiful. You can visit the awe-inspiring Yoyogi Park to enjoy a matcha green tea whilst taking in the cherry blossoms or make your way to Harajuki and Shibuya and experience the fashion capitals of Tokyo. And if technology is more your thing, then you can swing by um, Akihabara to check out the latest electronics and gadgets. What's worth noting is how the service everywhere is absolutely impeccable and it may shock you how quickly your order is served or how fast an item of clothing is fetched from the cloakroom. A little bit different from here in the UK. Now, if you're a Disney fan, then you've got the Disney parks and Tokyo has great parks to go and see. The first one is based on the parks of California and Florida and will have your favourite characters such as the Disney princesses, Mickey and Minnie Mouse and the Toy Story characters. The other Disney park, Tokyo Disney Sea, is something that really interests me and that's because it's unique to Japan. It's inspired by myths and legends of the seas and bases itself on the ports all around the world. It has a Mediterranean harbour, a mysterious island, the Mermaid Lagoon, the Arabian coast, the Lost River Delta, Port Discovery and an American waterfront. And as cruisers, uh, this is really, really intriguing. It kind of looks like you're taken into a fairy tale. They even have a steam liner that looks very much much like, like Queen Mary. Our old home. Well, well that was Queen Mary too, unless oh, you're right. particularly older than me. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but we used to work, <laughs> we did used to work on Queen Mary too, and of course Queen Mary is the real famous lady uh, that's now, um, well, sitting in, in Long Beach, so you can still go and have a hotel stay on her. But it's a great thing about, about Japan and about this particular Disney park, is the fact that you get a sense of what cruising has to offer in one particular location. Now, on a clear day, you can actually see Mount Fuji from Tokyo. 
The Kimono Kodo Trail is an ancient pilgrimage route winding through the Kai Mountains. The Nakasendo Trail will take you on a historical journey um, as you traverse the historic byways once used by feudal landlords to travel to and from the greater powers of Tokyo. Along each of these routes stand traditional wooden guest houses where you'd be welcome to stay or just rest up for a few hours. The next port we're going to look at here is Kobe, where when you land you may well be overwhelmed with a desire to explore and with good reason because there's so much going on here from the city museum to the harbour and the amazing cuisine in Chinatown. Now, when you arrive, you simply have to taste some of the well-known Wagyu My beef. favourite. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise known as Kobe beef, uh, when you are there. Uh, it's the hottest meat in today's marketplace, as attested to by the massive meat eater next door to me, a carnivore known as Glenn Wallace. <laughs> um, and it's striking because its high degree of marbling adds an extraordinary depth of flavour, making Wagyu beef the most tender, the most succulent and the best tasting beef one can find. In fact, I'm going to leave this now and go and get me some Wagyu beef. How about you? You go plus five marbling on a Wagyu beef, that's me done. Bottle of red. Right. Happy days. <laughs> So moving on to another place that I've visited, really, really fascinating place to go and see, and that's Kyoto. Now, when you dock in Kobe, you can actually travel from there into Kyoto if you want to. And here, this is easily the most traditional city in all of Japan. Beautiful. It was even once the actual capital city of the country itself. Now, here the locals still speak with a language quite unlike the rest of Japan. And as the former capital, Kyoto also has far more of its share of temples and shrines to explore. Notably places here are the Golden Pavilion and the Niju Castle. But whatever you do there, make sure you get out and about because it was fascinating when I was there. Yeah, it's a place you will catch a glimpse of a, of a geisha kind of shuffling along. Yeah, that's what, you've, that's that's what you class as the gardens. traditional Japan when you've got that in your head. Yeah, that, if, if that's your traditional idea of Japan. Whereas obviously Tokyo is a lot more modern and more sort of cosmopolitan. Absolutely, like so it's a great contrast to Tokyo and Kyoto. Now both the cities are surrounded by picturesque mountains and serve up excellent local specialities. Um, as we've already mentioned, Kobe beef or Wagyu beef is held as the best in Japan. And also be sure to try the sushi. It's like nothing you'd have tried before. Now, whilst you're exploring Kyoto, the onzons are a must to see. Onzon means a hot spring bath and they're a quintessential Japanese experience. And there's no better way to relax after a day of sightseeing. Although one thing to bear in mind is that onsen are traditional bathhouses, so you will have to don your birthday suit. Now for the history bus among you, a trip to Hiroshima is a must see to add to your list. Um, and whilst you're here, you can visit the A-Bomb Dome, Peace Park and Peace Memorial Museum. Despite its tragic history, the incredible reconstruction and respectful ode to its past is a feat to be commended. Over the past seven decades, the city has managed to rebuild itself in spectacular fashion, restoring many of the ancient monuments while also reinventing itself as a modern metropolis. Hiroshima Castle, for example, was completely wiped out by the blast, but it has been reconstructed to resemble the original structure, which was first erected in the 16th century. Elsewhere, Shikin Garden is a traditional Japanese garden that had been Hiroshima's pride and joy prior to the war, and again, it's been recreated in even more glorious fashion. Downtown Hiroshima, meanwhile, represents the city's future and is home to the Peace Memorial Park, which was created after the war as a symbol of the local vision for peace moving forward. Now, this part of town is also where you'll find the Okuma Mural, a neighbourhood that has become synonymous with Hiroshima's most famous culinary specialities, the Okonomiyaki. Consistent of fried batter and cabbage, as well as a range of different toppings, this is something that must be sampled when visiting the city itself. So, on to Nagasaki. Uh, it's one of Japan's closest port cities to the Asian mainland and has played a prominent role in foreign trade relations for many centuries for Japan. In fact, it was the most important of only a few ports that were open to restricted numbers of foreign traders during Japan's famous period of isolation. In more recent history, though, Nagasaki became the second city, sadly after Hiroshima, to be destroyed by an atomic bomb towards the end of World War II. And from uh, Gunkaijima, an abandoned island off Nagasaki's coast, to the Nagasaki Peace Park, commemorating the atomic bombing, there is so much to see to actually try and understand and appreciate what happened and see how the people have moved on. It's a wonderful, emotional place, enriched by its history. Now we move on to Osaka, 
and uh, this is the biggest port city of Japan. Now, Osaka is known for its nightlife and its thriving culinary culture. In fact, the term eat yourself into bankruptcy is a very popular phrase in Osaka. Osaka is also renowned for its unpretentious attitude of the locals and its fun-loving atmosphere. Now, right by the port is the Universal Studios, and it's actually a place which bases itself on a lot of different popular movies such as Spider-Man, Back to the Future, Terminator, or Glenn's favorite, Jurassic Park. And it's similar to the Universal Studios you hear about in America, but with its own Japanese spin. And for all you Harry Potter fans, there's even a Harry Potter section of the park, which I am very excited about. Now just a stone's throw away is the Osaka Aquarium. Uh, it's actually connected to Universal Studios by ferry and it shows a wide range of life that inhabits the Pacific Rim. Now you'll also start your journey of the aquarium on the 8th floor and you'll slowly work your way down seeing all sorts of animals that occupy the sea. The main attraction however is the whale shark positioned at the centre. Osaka has some outstanding sites such as its famous castle, and the Shichinoji Temple, which has been a political and economic force since the 5th century, trading with both Korea and China, and actually was the place from which Japan was later unified. Now, whilst visiting Osaka, you can make your way to the city's most famous entertainment district, which is known as Minami. And this is located around Namba Station, and it offers an abundant dining and shopping choice, uh, and it's also known by the locals as Osaka's Kitchen. Now moving on to Naha, and as the largest city on Japanese island of Okinawa, the entire city of Naha has become something of a shrine to the sacrifices made during the Second World War, with moving memorials and monuments paying tribute to the Battle of Okinawa at every single turn. Okinawa Peace Park is simply beautiful, and it's become something of a focal point containing a number of memorials while offering stunning views across the sea. Elsewhere, the Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum is the place you want to go to learn more about the battle itself and its history. And if art is more your thing, then make sure you visit the Okinawa Peace Memorial Hall, exhibiting the work of leading Japanese artists. Now, other activities in Naha Island include scuba diving around the nearby Karama Islands, fishing and simply relaxing on the beach while enjoying the sunshine. Okinawa has a yearly Sea God Festival where they have fishermen compete against one another and this usually takes place around May time every year and is a sight to behold as each team races in these long boats that are designed to look like dragons. So now let's dive into Sapporo, the largest city on the island of Hokkaido. The city is full of art, fountains and really beautiful flowers. Lots and lots of beautiful flowers. In fact, to the south of the city is the fantastic Atori Plaza. It's an underground shopping mall home to the Haloshi um, public multivision video project, which shares news and special programs for up to 14 hours a day as well as a huge selection of shops and eateries for you to browse through. There are many essential sites to see on a wander around Sapporo, from the Sapporo Clock Tower and the former government office building, known simply as Red Brick, to the stunning Odori Park, blessing Sapporo with beer gardens in summer and snow festivals in winter. It's a must see at any time of the year. Now, you can travel north just a few kilometers and you'll find yourself at the Shiroika Bito Park, which is unbelievably a confectionery theme park, something we need more of in this country. And its main attraction is the tours around the Shiroika Bito production plant. Shiroika Bito, for those who don't know, is basically two light French baked cookies sandwiching either white or milk chocolate. Sounds tasty. It does. Now moving on to something close to my heart it is the Sapporo Beer Museum. Now it's the only one of its kind in Japan and was opened in 1987. It provides visitors with a varied knowledge of the history and nature of brewing. Not only this, it's the perfect match for the Hokkaido cuisine. Now one of the things to definitely try that if you're into the local cuisine is the Genghis Khan pot. And it's a Japanese lamb dish grilled on a skillet with vegetables such as bean sprouts and onions completed with a soy dipping sauce. Now on the southeast side of the island of Hokkaido is the town of mist, or what's known as the town of mist, uh, also called Koshiro in Japanese. And this gives you a great opportunity to visit the Akan National Park. Those who visit can also see the traditional Ainu dances at their Kotan, which is a dance of the indigenous Hokkaido group, and also enjoy outdoor activities such as canoeing, mountain bike tours, and camping. 
Basically, its abundance of volcanic peaks, the thick forests and the crystal clear lakes are totally sublime, and this peaceful haven really provides a break from all those crowds. Now moving on to Fukuoka, and this has been an important harbour city for many centuries and was chosen by the Mongol invasion forces as their landing point in the 13th century. Now today, Fukuoka is the product of the fusion of two cities in the year 1889, when the port of Fukata and the former castle town of Fukuoka were reunited in one city called Fukuoka. So let's have a look at some of the itineraries that you can do on board cruise ships to give you a chance to experience some of those incredible Japanese ports. And it's worth noting that most of the cruises that go to Japan also do include South Korea and China. And the good thing about this is that you get to soak up the different cultures of East Asia. There is so much to experience in this continent that it's a truly draw-dropping experience. Plus, you're likely to get more than one night in the major cities. And the major cities in Asia are so big that there's actually so much to do that you will need more than one night. I mean, just looking at Tokyo, um, there's so many things you could choose to do and not be disappointed. Now, we thought we'd give you some of Keith and Glenn's top tips. Yep. Um, and bit, bit, kind of little bits of advice, I suppose, if you are planning a cruise in this particular area. The first thing is that most people decide they want to go and cruise to Japan around springtime for one reason, that's to see the cherry blossoms. That's true. Uh, they're in beautiful shades of pink and white. They're absolutely stunning, whether you see them from afar or whether you see the exquisite detail up close. Um, but what would you say about making book sure early. you book, book early? Book now, you've got to book now because they, people say, oh, we'll just leave it, we'll leave it. Anytime you go to somewhere where it's their height of season because they're going for that particular reason, mm. and someone like Japan is becoming so accessible now with cruising, but we've had so many people phoning up like three or four months before the cruise, have you got any space? Nothing, no. nothing at all. So they need to book early if they want to do that. Now, originally also used to ward off evil spirits, fireworks have a long history in Japan and are an integral part of Japanese summers. Now, hundreds of fireworks shows are held every year across the country, mainly during the summer holidays in July and August, with some of them drawing hundreds of thousands of spectators. So blossoms in spring, fireworks in the summer. There's some big choices here. One of the other must-sees in Japan are the snow monkeys, and these are found in the foothills of the Japanese Alps uh, in the village of Yukodanka. And this is where you can head to the Jikokodani Monkey Park to see these fantastic snow monkeys frolicking in their own hot spring pools. Now, a sense of history and tradition is prevalent the country over, and with a courteous and patriotic population to guide you. The food and drink on offer will enhance your visit with wonderful national dishes that create an occasion in themselves. Sushi and sake or tempura seafood are just some of the obvious delicacies to offer with plenty more unusual treasures to explore. Another thing you'll notice when in Japan is that vending machines are a little bit of an obsession for this wonderful nation. And lined up in clusters, they sell everything you can imagine. You'll find the weird and wonderful, um, and this is it's kind of crazy because it is an around the clock yep. retail craze. But to give you an example, fresh eggs, bags of rice, flowers, and okay, beer, which you kind of expect. Yeah. But eggs. We hope we've given you enough of an overview of traveling to Japan. Now, as you know, we love to hear from you, and this show is all about giving you the information you want to. So don't forget to get in touch and let us know if you've ever been to Japan or if you'd like to go. Each week we ask you a question about travelling and of course the episode you've just watched. And if you get it right, we'll give you a mention on the show next week. Now if you're from the UK and get the question right, there's an opportunity of even getting a special cruise-related prize. Mm. Okay, so last week's question was, Crystal have an Elton John tribute show on board their cruise ships. What is the title of that show? Now the answer is... Rocket Man. <laughs> Love that song. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations to the winner who is on screen right now. Now this week's question is, in the spring, the iconic cherry blossoms are usually in bloom, but what beautiful shades are they in? Get your comments in the section below for a chance to hear your name in next week's show. So thank you very much for watching and we hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Cheers, guys. Hi everyone, thanks very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe below and remember to click the bell to get those notifications turned on. And if you're looking for more fantastic travel content like this, then click on the videos to the right 
it will be really, really informative. Or you can click on the Planet logo to the left and go to our website for some really fantastic deals. Thanks for watching.